everyone and welcome to this episode of Wondering Wild. Today is Forgotten Friday and we're going to be talking about woolly mammoths. Okay, so the woolly mammoth is actually just one species in a long list of mammoths. This particular species had the scientific name Mammothus progenius. Now, though these animals were so large, as we all know from movies such as Ice Age, the woolly mammoth actually wasn't even near to the largest one. That would go to the imperial mammoth, which weighed over 10 tons. Now, the woolly mammoths were around during the Pleistocene, or the Ice Age, as we all know well. And they were the, actually like the last mammoths. So mammoths started around the Pleistocene and they generally moved north and then as the ice age started you really had some more successful species such as the woolly mammoth. So they were actually the last of the mammoths in a long line that moved up from Africa and they're the ancestors to the modern day elephants. Now the reason we know so much about woolly mammoths actually is because of where they were found. So woolly mammoths were found all over the Arctic, and when they would die, they was usually such cold temperatures that they were frozen in the permafrost. So when we come across fossilized remains of these animals, they're completely intact. That includes hair, skeleton, muscle, fat, and that's really, really rare, because usually all we get is maybe a skeleton or even an imprint. So the first true woolly mammoth skeleton was found in 1799 and it was brought to the Zoological Museum of the Russian Science Academy in 1806 where it became the first full skeleton to be completed of an extinct animal. So this was revolutionary. I mean now when you go to a museum such as the Smithsonian you're used to seeing large skeletons of dinosaurs or animals that you'll never get to see. But back then that was really rare because you maybe got a few bones here and there. You never really got a complete skeleton just due to the years and years that stayed in the ground. The odds of that are really low. But with these fully preserved specimens, they were able to get their first ever complete skeleton and able to reconstruct it by basing it off the Asian elephant that it's so closely related to. The only mistake that they made when reconstructing this mammoth was that they put the tusks in the wrong socket, causing them to seem as if they curved outward, when in reality, a mammoth tusk should curve inward. Now, the woolly mammoth largely resembled today's elephants. However, they had some adaptations that better helped them to live in their cold environment. So for example, they had long hair, and so this hair could be up to three feet long per strand, and it covered their entire bodies. Even their ears were fur-lined. Now, talking about their ears, their ears weren't quite as large as some of the elephants we see today, which are in more warm climates, and so they need their ears to be big to help release heat. Now, these mammoths had the opposite problem. They wanted to conserve heat, so instead their ears were small, providing less surface area for the heat to radiate off of. Now, these mammoths were also 13 feet tall and weighed about 6 tons, making them very large. So just like when we talked about the stellar sea cow last week that lived in Arctic temperatures, we know that this large body would allow them to conserve their heat more easily. Now they had very large tusks that in some males could be up to 15 feet long. Now yes, they may have used these tusks to fight each other and maybe even a saber-toothed tiger even though we have no real proof of that. But more likely they used it like our elephants do today and they used it to burrow into the ground to dig up shrubs and things to eat that may be under a thick layer of snow. Now these tusks also had another really interesting use. We can age a mammoth by its tusks. Just as you can count the rings on a tree to see how old it is, you can also count the rings in a mammoth's tusk to see how old it was. From about 30,000 to 12,000 years ago, woolly mammoths were a large focus of many cave paintings. Now there's many reasons why this could have been. It could have been that 
the cave dwellers believed that it was a sort of totem. So if they captured the image of the mammoth on the cave wall, it would mean that they could capture the actual mammoth, which they used for meat and for warmth through their coats in the wild. Now, it could have been that, or maybe they worshiped them as sort of gods who were able to control the environment and to dig for roots and things. Or maybe they were just bored and wanted to draw a picture of something they saw around them all the time. We really don't know, but we can speculate. And we know some research that these people had cultures that usually surrounded the things that provided them with what they needed. And like I said, the woolly mammoth was huge to these cave dwellers. It provided them with furs to keep them warm in the Arctic and also provided meat. The tusks were used in the building of their homes. They wasted nothing. So the possibility is they did worship these mammoths as sort of like a protector and a bringer of warmth and food and life. Now, though most of the woolly mammoth population died about 10,000 years ago at the end of the Ice Age, some did hang around on an island in the Arctic till about 4,000 years ago. Now, these mammoths that lived on Wrangell Island probably started to become slightly smaller than their ancestors because as the Ice Age left, even the Arctic began to become less cold. Now, I'm not saying you don't need a jacket when you're up there, but compared to the extremes that happened during the Ice Age, the mammoths on this island wouldn't need quite as thick a fur coat. They wouldn't need to be as large to conserve heat. So they would start to become smaller. Now, we know that the original herds of the mammoths went extinct due to the climate change at the end of the Ice Age and also probably some human pressures around this time. Now, the group that was on this island probably went extinct for different reasons. So when you have a population that is isolated on an island, they're more likely to go extinct. So for example, if there was a storm that hit this island and maybe wiped out some of the population, that would affect them greatly. They wouldn't be able to come back as quickly. They couldn't recover from this loss. There's also the fact that there was probably no more than about 500 to 1,000 mammoths on this island. That's a very small gene pool. And when a species is pulling from a small gene pool, this encourages disease, birth defects, mutations, and they're really just not as healthy of an animal. So more than likely, they just couldn't sustain their own population with only the genetic material on this island. We won't really know for sure, but these are some of the reasons why that last holdout of the woolly mammoths probably went extinct. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Forgotten Friday. I hope you loved learning all about the woolly mammoth. And as always, my sources are found in the description box below. If you liked what you saw here today, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see us back here on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for new videos. But I've got something exciting to announce. So starting Monday is the 12 days of Christmas. So as goes the old Christmas Carol, I think we're going to start talking a little bit about the animals you hear about, like turtle doves and geese laying. So, starting on Monday until the last of the 12 days of Christmas, I'm going to upload a short video every day telling you about either the animal spoke about in the song or maybe an animal representative. So, as we know, five golden rings, that's not an animal at all. But I'm going to give you a substitute animal. So something golden, something ring-shaped, you'll have to come by and see. And so join me coming up for our 12 days of Christmas. And as always, stay wild and never stop wondering.